John, I did my doctoral work in uh, brain science because I wanted to understand consciousness. Uh, many people have had the same motivation. Uh, but with the tremendous advance in brain science, many brain scientists say that the question of consciousness is, is an interesting question, but it is really not a significant question because it's just the output of the brain. And so everything we, we are learning, and there's a great deal more we have to learn, but we see the trajectory and there's nothing strange. The output of the brain is mind or consciousness or mental activity, just like some would say the output of the stomach is digestive juices or production of, of digestion. Uh, the output of the brain is, uh, is consciousness. So th it's not really a very interesting question beyond uh, the pure science. Well, I think the analogy with the stomach's a, 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 little, a little dicey. I mean, it seems to be like integral to what a stomach is that it you know, has a certain role in digestion. But it's not, in general, it seems integral. Well, I'd need some convincing that it's integral to what a brain is, that uh, it's the, a, a seat of consciousness, because after all, you know, it, something can... You, you'd think you could have a brain that wasn't conscious, no? I mean, there's a sense in which we're not conscious when we're asleep. But our brain is, you know, we've still got a brain, and our brain is still maybe monitoring and doing certain sorts of things. So it's not, it's, it's maybe something, even if you've thought that it's something that a brain can sometimes generate, it's not that, well, any old brain generates it. And there's quite delicate questions that are, seem quite deep about uh, what are the, what's the diff, what, what is it about the conscious brains that differentiates it from the, um, unconscious brains. I mean, it's easy to answer what's the difference between big stomachs and small stomachs, <laughs> but the, diff the question as to what really distinguishes conscious brains from non-conscious brains um, doesn't seem easy. I mean, two things, other things that seem quite striking to me, at least our intuitive sense of things, is that consciousness isn't like being bald or being thin and that it's not vague, the distinction between... <laughs> objects with a light on and objects with a light off. There's nothing that it's like for this table to be this table. It's, it's got no perspective on the world. There, I do, and it feels like there's a sharp line in the world between things with a light on and things with a light off. That's our, at least our naive perspective. Mm -hmm. And that bears some, if that's true that there's a sharp line, it's quite striking that it's true and needs special explanation. Okay. And that, Some scientists would say when you go through medical procedure, have surgery, and you're given anesthesia, uh, you go from totally awake to absolute non-consciousness in a matter of seconds, and you can see through your brain waves the difference. And so somehow those different brain waves are in fact your consciousness, this so-called identity theory. I'm even supposing uh, that somehow our neurological makeup constitutes the fact that we're conscious somehow, it seems that to me that we're, al or it seems that we're quite a long way from understanding what sorts of structural features about the brain make it a thing with the light on. I mean, you might think that this intuitive idea of things with a light on and things with a light off needs to be dismantled. But assuming that there's something to it, it seems that there's something, we're quite a long way from understanding the structure feature. I mean, you're not l really suggesting that we can just say, oh, to have a wave that looks like that, that's, if you have a wave that looks like that, it's conscious, otherwise not. And so we can take a rat and a fly and take all these animals and then just look to see whether they've, I mean, we're not, <laughs> in a position where there's some little crude test that you can do on any creature no, but you in really, any state. You can, you can build a strong correlation between brain no. waves So and of time. course there are evidential signs of a light on in humans. To try and project that to a general systematic account of what it, what it is that constitutes um, um, uh, consciousness in all creatures and all possible creatures is a very different matter. I mean, there are some signs of being happy in humans, like smiling, 
But no one would think that it's constitutive of being happy that you're able to smile. <laughs> but there is a strong correlation between a disposition to smile and being happy. So certainly we've got correlations, but it's very different to go from a correlation to the conclusion that what it is to be is... So, so to use your analogy, being happy make me smile. So the smile is related to some other thing, which also relates to my being happy. So both are representations, so the smile doesn't cause the happiness. Yeah, so there are correlations that have to do with cause, causal relations in one direction and another. I mean, there's a correlation between uh, like um, having really good food and being happy and meeting someone really nice and being yeah. happy, and then the causal directions in the other way, but that's not what, it, what happiness is. Mm. In saying all that, I'm not saying foreclosing the possibility that somehow consciousness is what, what it is to be conscious is somehow a matter of certain structural physical features, but I think we're a long way from any such identification, and certainly the existence of correlations in humans uh, is only a small step towards uh, any sorts of speculative hypotheses uh, of a really strong sort. So to brain scientists who say that the questions of consciousness are really not very important because they are clearly the output of brain function and really are almost a waste of time to talk Well, about. even if they were the output of brain function, if you don't know exactly what constitutes the output, you know, or what are the structural conditions for that output? It's still, a, I mean, even if it was an output of brain function in, in your lingo, hmm. that doesn't mean it's not an interesting question, especially when people aren't in a position to answer it yet.